you are now locked in and listening to The Issue. This guy is a franchise quarterback, and no, I don't want to hear any pushback on that. It, it feels like a top 10 roster to me. It feels like it can win a championship. This is The Issue. Yo, what's up? We are back. It is The Issue, Thursday, December 28th, and we have another episode here for you today. Episode 218. Uh, We got a lot of football to talk as normal, but first things first, hope you enjoyed your holiday, enjoyed Christmas. It was was a good time. Uh, A lot of festivities, a lot of uh, hanging out with friends, family, and definitely on the recovery side of things. Um, today and this week, but I thought this was the Russian badminton podcast. Yeah. I, I came ready to go with my notes. So all all just, the Russian that's badminton, be tough. Yeah, how yeah. About the, so um, how I guess I'll just have to wing it then on the football. Switzerland, part. Uh, I guess curling, Swiss, Swiss curling, underwater basket weaving. Oh yeah, like no, no, yeah, of course I have my notes on that as well. Um, anyway, it's going to be a good show. We got Tim's rant to start things off. We're going to talk about Brock Purdy not being the MVP, the implosion that we saw on the night of Christmas, and and how he played against. Uh, the Ravens. It was a bad showing from the possible MVP. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Get into hits and misses to close out the first segment. Into the second, we will have our Week 17 predictions and our Week 17 bets on a budget. Got to bounce back. Yeah, we we're looking for a bounce back on bets, and then um, I'm, I'm looking to possibly maybe put you away in uh, in picks here as long as things go my way these last two weeks. Not happening. Um, but not hey, happening. Today, we're tied. Today's going to be a good day, though. We have uh, our top ten NFL teams sitting there at the start of the third segment. We're going to rank all of them. We do it every four weeks. We just finished up week 16. Thus, this is our last ranking of the top 10 teams before we get into the playoffs and kind of we'll look do at one, the playoff Yeah, we'll, do, we'll, we'll rank the playoff teams then, yeah. which likes to be a top four. And the box check game yeah. will come up yeah, there. That'll be good. Um, and then we'll have game of the week to finish things off. But, guys, thanks for watching no matter how you're with us today. YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Prime Video is where you can watch the show. And you can listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and, of course, the iHeartRadio app. It's going to be like a bonus uh, hit number one here because, oh, God, what was that? About two or three weeks ago I said it, it's pretty hard for Brock Purdy to be the MVP of the league when he's not the MVP of his own backfield, right? So in terms of most valuable player, is Brock Purdy a really good quarterback? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Is he a top 10 quarterback? Statistically, yes. I don't think so talent-wise. I think if you put him, if you just lined them all up and said talent, give me the top 10 most talented quarterbacks, he wouldn't be in that. Um, if I said, uh, I'm the I'm the coach, right, so I don't have Kyle Shanahan's scheme, and I can pick my quarterback, he probably wouldn't be in the top 15 for me in terms of picking my quarterback to start my franchise with, but he's certainly really good in that system. He's very productive. He's the right quarterback for Kyle and for this team. Uh, but that does not make him the MVP of the league. And it was like, oh, but P, he's a Brock Purdy hater. No, to say somebody isn't the MVP of the league is not hating on them. That's saying they're not the best player in the most pinnacle and front-facing league in the world. So, like, that's not hating on somebody to say they're not the best player in the best league in the world. This is not hating. That's just the reality the situation. And that was exposed on Christmas night uh, when they got trounced by the Ravens. Brock Purdy, of course, throwing four interceptions, no touchdowns. What do you have, a 30-something QBR? Uh, 33, yes. That's rough. That's rough. So, right, again, if I if I said, let's rank the top five players on the Niners' offense, I would go Christian McCaffrey, I would go Debo Samuel, I'd go Trent Williams, I'd go George Kittle. Is there an argument Brock Purdy's fifth? I would say, yeah, Brock Purdy's probably fifth. That's on his own offense. On his whole team, Nick Bose is better. Fred Warner's better. I would take Dre Greenlaw. I think Chase Young's a more talented player, a more impactful player, depending on the game. Brock Purdy's a fine quarterback. But I said this three weeks ago. In terms of value, right? you take Mahomes away, and they don't even look good with Mahomes. But you take Mahomes away, they're screwed. I mean, they're screwed. You take Josh Allen out of Buffalo, Josh Allen's their leading rusher most of the time. Now that they have James Cook, who's able to run the football consistently, he doesn't have to be. But he's the most talented player on that field every single Sunday, Monday, Thursday night, whatever. Brock Purdy is fine, right? What Cam Newton said at best, he's a game manager. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a game manager. But those guys aren't typically MVPs of the league. Lamar Jackson right now would probably be my vote. 
or Christian McCaffrey. I'd probably lean McCaffrey. But again, he's a running back. So in terms of value, how much value does he have when compared to like a Lamar Jackson? It's a tough argument to have. I See, I've been back and forth, right? So obviously we had the Brock Purdy discussion. I said he wasn't my MVP. He proved that he's not the MVP. If I could cast a vote right now, I'd go Lamar 1, Christian McCaffrey, a very close second. I would go Dak 3rd. I'd probably go Tua 4th. Tyreek, actually, I'm sorry, I'd probably go Tyreek Hill 4th, Tua 5th. Brock Purdy would be my 6th if I had 6 on the ballot. What would your MVP ballot look like? Um, I definitely wouldn't have Brock anywhere in the top 5. Um, I would probably... Oh. I think Dak would be a little higher up on mine. I'd probably have Dak at two. I would put C Mac at, at mine would be Chris McCaffrey, Dak Prescott. You'd have C Mac winning it right now. I don't think you're crazy. Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill? At three. Okay. Uh from there I guess I could be argued in a couple different directions. I thought it was gonna be Jalen for a while, but they've lost too many games now. Jalen Hurts. They've lost but too think, many games, and he just hasn't looked very good. No. Um, I haven't been impressed the past couple of weeks. So Now, hear me out. Hear me out. At least my top three, that's what my top three would be. Everybody, when the Browns were winning a lot of games, like, oh, Miles Garrett deserves the MVP. That's ridiculous. TJ Watt. If they make it into the playoffs. If they make it into the playoffs and they can... How is he not? It, well, if they win out and he he's instrumental in them winning... In the Steelers, okay, winning so, in Seattle, and then going to Baltimore. Okay, so if he leads the league in sacks, and they sneak in. I mean, he has an argument. With the, he has a really strong with the argument. joke of a coaching staff yeah. from the top down, right. head coach all the way down, an absolute laughable little tykes coaching staff. And you, Yeah. Uh, I mean, just a middle school level quarterback play. I mean, yes, Mason Rudolph looked good on, was that Christmas Eve? Well, no. Yeah, Christmas, yeah. No, 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 Saturday. The 23rd, Saturday, yeah. yeah. Christmas Eve Eve. With I know I know he looked good, but just abysmal quarterback play. Uh, Najee Harris, who couldn't find a hole. It, I mean, if it found if it found him, yeah. Um, I mean, it's evident how many games he's won for the Steelers too. I mean, you go back through the season, you look at some of these games where he had the pivotal sack or or the strip sack or or some sort of interception that turned the tides where we got a defensive touchdown. I mean, he's done so much. I think I don't. I, Honestly, I don't think either of the two, Miles Garrett or TJ Watt, no, they should win the MVP. MVP. No, I they agree. should not. But if if Miles Garrett is in the discussion, TJ Watt better should be, be right ahead up ahead of him. Yeah, in the discussion. Well, he's got to be Defense Player of the Year. He's TJ does. He has got to be. be. I mean, nobody else is really threatening like they were last year. Like last year, Micah Parsons was was making a really strong argument. So this year, he's kind of. He's fallen off just yeah. a hair. But this is now two seasons in a row where he started fast and fallen off late. Yeah, so, so, But, I mean, he could be getting used to the NFL workload. So, let's cast our ballots right now. Your favorite and your pick for MVP. I'm going to go. I would go Christian McCaffrey. I'm going Christian McCaffrey. Okay. Because Christian McCaffrey. And now, if you had to go with a dark horse pick, I'll go with – actually, go ahead. Unless you, unless you don't have one. I mean, it's not really dark horse, but it's just like somebody that could something that's someone that's longer odds. Probably not in the top five in odds right now. Go ahead. I don't know. Jake Browning? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Gardner Minshew? No. Um, I'm, I'm thinking. I'll go Tyreek Hill. I think he's like sixth right now in odds in Vegas. I would go Tyreek. I think he would be my my dark horse pick. I know it's not a super flashy dark horse pick, yeah. but. Maybe maybe Dak, but I think he's fifth, so he's somewhere, somewhere around there. Yeah. Either way, uh, it will be interesting to see how that all shakes out. Uh, let's go and move into hits and misses now, where we go over where we were right and wrong last week. All right, hit number one here. I'd like to circle and, and stay on this Brock Purdy discussion and take it a little bit of a different direction. So, of course, Brock Purdy slips in the MVP uh, odds, I guess. He's now tied with Dak for fifth. Yeah. Um, in case you're wondering, do a little research here, you know. It's this thing called a computer. It's nice. I'll tell you what. Um, anyway, uh, so now tied for fifth in MVP. MVP aside, where would you say Brock is on the spectrum of is Brock a franchise quarterback? On that on that timeline, on that spectrum, where on that is he? I don't know. Where I, on the rainbow is Brock in terms of franchise quarterbacks? I think he falls somewhere closer to a Baker Mayfield than, or like a who he was replaced with, a Sam Darnold, or who? Oh no! Don't even give that. me that. Sam Darnold's a bust. Okay, 
I don't think he's a bust. I don't think he's a bust, but I don't. Well, it, I don't even know if you can be a bust but as Mister Relevant. You just, yeah. you're just not a hit. There's just there, there's not much. Okay, Th this one's tough because when you look at Brock, he did fine and he has done he's done good, and it's been a great story up until this point. Do I think he's the guy that you signed for five oh, six God, years? No. No. Oh God, no. no. So he's not a no, franchise no, no. quarterback. He's okay, good well, for now, and he's good for what he does, but I, it, he's not an elite quarterback that you can count on winning championships with. It, now, now, now here's the question. Can I get Brock at $25 Because if I can, I think I'd take him. I mean, you now, I know he's making $1 million right now, or a little bit less than a million. So even at $25 million, you wouldn't be able to stack the roster as good. But I do think Brock Purdy's an, a franchise quarterback. Do I think he is a top... 10 franchise quarterback probably not well i don't i just don't think you're gonna win anything i think that roster is so good i think it's stacked and you're armed to the teeth with weapons on that offense but you're just not going to get anywhere and you're not going to win a lombardi with a brock purdy at quarterback i'm saying well i think you can but it's got to be this year or next year while he's still really cheap because if you're gonna pay him even if it is only 25 million you're not well, gonna be able to load the as roster of right as now much. i mean the, they can't beat the ravens they're, right, they're, i mean like they yes. compete with the ravens but they're they should get to the Super Bowl. They're still the... We're, we're going to rank these teams later. Are they still not the second best team in football? They probably are. But I was going to say, like, are you taking Dallas over them? No, but are I think it's close. Are you taking Philly over them? I think if Dallas and San Francisco play 10 times, I think San Francisco wins six. They just need to catch them on the off week. Let's also not get recency bias. We did see San Francisco drub them by like 32 earlier in the year. Right. So, like, I would take San Fran over Dallas. I would take them over Philly. I would take them over anybody in the NFC. I'm just I take him over Kansas City, that's one, for damn sure. In a one-game playoff type scenario, crazy things can happen. No, I agree. I agree. I do think Brock's a franchise quarterback. I think he's closer to a Baker Mayfield, though. Sign yeah. him for two, three years at a cheaper price. That's fair. All right, miss number one here. Uh, two and three on bets. That's a rough uh, week, but we did have a four and one week last week. So if you really think about it, we're, we're back to our three and two average. Yeah. You, if you really three think two, about it. Two, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll be fine. You know, we're going to get right back on track here uh, this coming week. We only got two Again, weeks left. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. We have two weeks to get to that sharp line. I know. We will do it. We're 2% off. So we need a four and one. We need like another four and one or a five and oh. I'm feeling five and oh this week. I'm feel I woke up feeling five and oh. I woke up feeling. There's a lot of good lines out there. There's a lot of good lines. I mean, look, just off the top of my head right now, I'm looking, right? You're telling me. You're telling me that the Bengals are seven-point dogs at Arrowhead. Jake Brown, I just, I just saw Mahomes piss down his own leg at home. That was and they're seven-point favorites. That was bad. We need to talk seven about point that Seven-point favorites. That was yeah. horrific. All right, hit number two here. Uh, we, we've been saying for a while in, in New Orleans, that roster's too good. That roster's too good to be this bad. I mean, to lose like that, I know it was 30 to 22. It seemed closer. That game was over in the second quarter. That game was not close. I mean, they got out physical. They got out played. Uh, New Orleans is not a very well-coached football team. No. To have that much talent, I know that you guys don't like Derek Carr. And I did this. Maybe I'll have to bring that ramp back up, but it's just not a great time because he's not playing very well. Yeah. But if Derek Carr continues these averages for another, what I say, five years, it puts him like in the top 15 of almost every major stat of category. All time. And it puts him right in the thick of names that are like bona fide Hall of Famers. Like it puts him with like Elway in one stat category, like Marino in another, Steve Young in another. Like, if he continues this pace for another like three years, he's going to be in the conversation in terms of overall stats yeah. of a Hall of Famer. I know you don't love Derek Carr, but that's where he's at in his career right now. Like He's a very productive, very good NFL quarterback. And for him to look this bad with this team, there's just no way that's all on him. It just makes, there's just me, no it way. makes me wonder what else is going on. Like There has to Coaching. be... I, I guess... It, you just don't have the guy, and you, you lose a Hall of well, Famer like Sh uh, Sean Payton. Right, and that was our hit. We've been saying Dennis Allen, like, not the guy for a while. No. Yeah. Um, but it's got to be something in that coaching room because, uh, yeah, like you said, Derek Carr is a very fine quarterback yeah. um, and usually does not look that bad. That was more of an anomaly of him looking like that. So. All right, Miss Number Two here. You kind of jokingly said it, but even your prediction wasn't as good as the actual thing. Mason Rudolph <laughs> leading the Steelers to victory. I, don't I think mean, I said that on the that show. Was I think out I said that was out of left field. Oh, is that off the air? I'm not you sure. You said something like, "Who to?" Th uh, you know, you said something oh. like, "Would it surprise you if Mason Rudolph like went off?" Like, he, but I, even in your head, I don't think you're. I don't think I you expected it. 124 pass rating. I didn't believe you know, it. Second play from scrimmage to George Pickens down the yeah. field. Like, I don't think anybody expected that. Even in your best, most hopeful, <laughs> optimistic thoughts, I don't think you expected that. A 34-11, like just 
thumping. Yeah. Um, but good for him, man. Good for him. He does. He deserved a shot, and he made the most of it. I would imagine he's the starter for the last two games. Like, yeah, I mean, he would have to be. That's the best Steelers quarterback performance since Big Ben. Just like uh, the great Terry Collins said, got to give us a shot. You got to give us a shot. He, he got a shot. He took a shot. Uh, look, Mason Rudolph looked good, and uh, I think that says something. I think, it, honestly. Again, he's got to be the star. He's earned himself the starting the himself the starting role for the rest of the year. Yeah, unless I, he pisses down his leg. Yeah, and I jokingly said, uh, and my my prediction of him being good was, what what would happen if Mason Rudolph comes in, runs the table, wins out, the Steelers somehow sneak into the playoff. He yeah. leads the Steelers down some crazy like playoff run, beats everybody, gets to the Super Bowl, and wins. What do you do? <laughs> okay, well, so I think Mitch is gone anyway after this year. Yeah, but I would say Mason would take over your number two spot and has an argument. It'd be a quarterback battle going into the uh, the preseason with Kenny. Yeah. Did you see Kenny's face when the whole stadium was chanting? Uh, I don't care. No. I just, to be honest with you, I just don't care. I, I don't think Kenny Pickett's good. I, I don't either. I think he should be. Uh, I think he should be the backup. Okay. Now, if I just said pure physical talent, who's more talented, Mason Rudolph or Kenny Pickett? I would say Mason Rudolph. A hundred percent. A hundred. Thank you. Big arm, big size, big hands, huge hands. Kenny. <laughs> Kenny's wearing gloves. Kenny two gloves. Could you imagine wearing gloves? Could you imagine? Could you be that? Could you imagine being that guy? Right, Maybe that's right. why Russ lost that game too. Yeah. He was wearing gloves. Hit number three here. Uh, we said it last season. We said it in the off season. We said it at the beginning of the season. I've been saying it since we started this podcast. Jared Goff. I'm on team Jared Goff. He yeah. is. He is a productive, professional, above average, really solid NFL quarterback. I'm not arguing he's top five. I'm barely even arguing he's top 10. Occasionally, I think he sneaks into the top 10 for a couple weeks. I'm arguing he's a top 12 to 15 quarterback that can lead you to a ton of wins in the right spot. People want to bang on Jared. Jared Goff's the worst quarterback in football. Shut up. You just don't watch the games then. Jared Goff's a super professional, productive NFL quarterback. Uh, Jared Goff has always been very good. Thank you. Did we forget about the Super Bowl run? Thank you. Thank do we, do we you. I know a lot of people him? like to dog on him. He's a good quarterback. Do we forget about him... Uh, almost winning MVP of the league the year that they went to the Super Bowl. Dude, Jared Goff can play, man. Out, yeah, he can play. Uh, that was, and then we're seeing it continue in uh, in Detroit. Like that, that, that's a winning very good, first division that's a title. very good football team. Very solid offense. Yeah. Rebuilding. They have the right guy at quarterback. And they have the right coach. Like that's going to be a very very powerful team in a year or two. I think people are sleeping on them now. They're, everybody's going to know Jared Goff's name pretty soon. Hear me out. In in a year or two, whenever they eventually move off Jared Goff, because I don't think he is like long term, long term. I mean, he's probably what thirty something now. He's probably he's probably. I mean, he's getting up there. 30, 31, something like that, right? So he's you know he's probably got two three years left in him. What if they move off from two years? from now keep your own head and hooker their backup quarterback i think it's yep. crazy do you think it's crazy coming off that acl surgery i said that's a great landing spot for him he can sit learn from jared goff good offense seemingly good coaching staff but ben johnson's probably gone so we'll see yeah we'll see miss number three here uh we did not see this jaguars collapse coming i mean we oh had my them God. this is was an, they were this a dark, has been an implosion they were one of the dark horse picks for us to win or to be the number one seed because we're like easy schedule division's kind of a, a mess yeah. right I mean, they're still leading the division by a thread, uh, you know, by a mini little tiebreaker over the Colts, but they're just not a good football team. I don't know what happened. I, I, I can't okay, put my now, finger on it. You I like Trevor Lawrence, Lawrence, but how much blame does he get? A lot of it. Thank you. A lot I would of say, blame. I would agree. I'd say upwards of 60%. Oh, oh, okay. Now, now we're talking absolutely. More than half. Cr- More than half. He has made... A lot I think of boneheaded he, errors. The majority, but not more than half. I would say he's got a, like forty percent. The defense is another. What do you like, mean the 30. majority, but not more than half? Majority is means more than half. No, no, no. The majority means the most out of all of it. Okay. And so if we have like four or five, like so, I would say like ownership it has about twenty percent. They've been a mess for years. Yeah, but you can't. Play. Coaching staff probably has, has about twenty percent. Defense like probably has about twenty percent, but he has forty percent. So that's still a majority. Okay. You know. Okay. I just think I don't know. Or the most, maybe, if, it would have been the right word. But. If you are a franchise quarterback you overcome. And, and you are the best thing that, since freaking sliced bread coming out of college, um, you, you have to overcome some things. You have no, to no, be able to be a truck and pull I the team. Could not agree more. Could not agree more. I don't know. It's not like they're bad either. They have good weapons. Yeah, no, I agree. They have, a, they have a damn good roster and they can't win. Guys, that's hits and misses. Don't go anywhere. We have predictions on the other side of the break. Welcome back in second segment 
first episode post Christmas. Merry Christmas if you didn't watch the uh, the episode before Christmas, right? Um, which I don't understand why you wouldn't have, but whatever. You know, it's fine. I'll forgive you. Um, maybe that'll be my New Year's resolution: forgiving people that don't watch us. You know, in hopes that they watch us the next time. I don't know if I can commit to that. Yeah, it's a good point. Screw that. That's a terrible <laughs> idea. Screw you. No, no, I'm just kidding. We appreciate you guys stopping in, however you are. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio. I mean, there's just a plethora of them, and you can find them all. Look at big word. A yeah, plethora. Huge word. Yeah. There's your vocab word of the day. Um, find them where? Find them in the link tree, mm-hmm. in the, on the website. It's all there. You know, if you can't find us, that's on you. Theissuesports.com. Yeah. Somebody send say. it to a friend. How about it? There's a Christmas present. Send it to your friend. Yeah. Uh, we are looking good as a show going into the new year, so um, excited about that. Also excited for the playoffs, but, I, you know, we're getting to the end of the NFL regular season here. We have our Week 17 predictions to get to first, and then obviously our Week 17 bets on a budget, of, as we've been doing for the last 17 there's, weeks. There's some good lines this week. Yeah, there are good lines, but, I mean, it's just getting depressing. We're getting close to close to a lot of um, predictions falling off here. I just don't I just don't want the season to end. No. I love NFL season. It's my favorite time of the year. It's something we gear up for all year long. So Perhaps anyway. Good. Let's get to it. Yeah. Better patter, let's get at her. Let's dive right in. So we have week seventeen predictions. Every pick for every game. Here we go. Dude, not a lot of splits this week. It, I mean there are just And by not a lot you mean one, right? Yeah. 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 There's there's just games that just feel pretty one sided and we'll start with the first one here on Thursday, of course, the Jets at the Browns. That to me that's just that that's a Browns all day long run the football, physical. Uh, it seems like that Jets defense is a little bit overhyped. When they play a good offense, especially a good offensive coach like we know Kevin Stefanski is, they seem to crumble a little bit. I mean, they gave up 28 to Washington, right? And Washington's not good. Yeah. Uh, so that that's troubling. So even their strength of their team isn't their strength, really. I guess Trevor Simeon looked okay. Brees Hall looked good. But I just don't think it's enough to beat the Browns at Cleveland. Yeah, um, it's a dogfight when you play Cleveland uh, of late. I, I think the, the the Browns have been solid and at least very competent for the last two to three years. And now that their defense is so good, I don't see a very underwhelming offense in New York going in to Cleveland and yeah. doing anything with the football. I would agree. The Saturday game, it's a uh, Monday Night Football Saturday night special which, edition. Which is weird. That's pretty weird. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, but it's going to be the Lions at the Cowboys. I'm going to take the Cowboys. I know I said it last week coming off a loss. I expect them to bounce back and dominate Miami. This is the game where I expect them to bounce back. I don't think they're going to dominate. I actually really like the Lions uh, to keep it close, but I do think they win, especially because they're at home. Dak as a home quarterback is insanely different than Dak on the road. Yeah. He's like 120 pass rating at home, like a 98 on the road. Still good on the road, but not like he is at home. That's a completely different team when they're in Jerry World, so I think they win. Uh, but I do like it to stay close. We'll get to that later, though. Yeah, I'm going Cowboys as a side here. Uh, I do... And you'll see it reflected in the bets on a budget. I think the, the Lions are a very competitive team that will be able to... Very live do, dog. It'll, it'll be back and forth. Uh, I think Dak will make some mistakes, but I think the Cowboys are good enough at this point where they're going to win this game. All right, let's go with the Titans at the Texans. I think C.J. Stroud will be back. I'll show that we thought that last week, and that screwed me <laughs> on predictions. But I'll still ride with the Texans here. Okay, we're both taking that uh, side. Now. At home. It's an interesting line at 3.5 for the for the Titans because you're getting the hook at 3.5 in a half in the divisional game. I'd probably bet uh, Tennessee. It's not in bets on the budget, but that's probably the side I'd be on. But I think the Texans win. Um, I, I don't trust the, the Titans as much to keep it close as you do. Um, I just think that you talk about the definition of inconsistent this year. The Tennessee yeah. Titans pop up. Um, it's just because they've been inconsistent at quarterback. And I, I have to say, a couple of years ago, I talked about maybe Mike Vrabel's a top five coach. I, I don't know. I don't know. He's showing his weakness a lot this year, though. There's an argument to be made that I'd fire him. I'm just throwing it out there. All right, wow. All right. Um, There's an argument to be made. I think he's a bottom 10 head coach in football. That's a statement. I mean, look, I'm sorry. It's a coach. It's a coach quarterback left tackle league, and they are awful at all three. That's fair. Will Levis is not the answer. Huh? No, and their left <laughs> tackle is not very good, and uh, and he has not been a good coach this year. Period. End of story. I'm taking the Texans though. Yeah, uh, Saints at the Buccaneers. I think the Bucks roll. Saints are bad. The Saints can't the figure out how they're, to play football. They're a poorly coached football team. Uh, and that's reflecting in their quarterback play and their run game. I was going to so. say, their quarterback doesn't know what, what team to throw the football to. Yeah, it's not good. Cardinals at the Eagles. If it was in Arizona, it's an interesting game. I really do. I think it's a scrappy game if it's in Arizona. I just don't think Kyler and that team is going to go on the road to cold Philly in December. Yeah. That just doesn't That doesn't feel like a good spot for me uh, for, for Arizona, so I'll go Philly. Uh, Philly, but 
I'm not going to lie. I'm concerned. I, I don't know what to think of Philly okay, that's why That's what I'm saying. I think Arizona's really scrappy. Yeah, They're scrappy, but like on on the Philadelphia side, you don't know what team you're getting. You don't know what Eagles team you're getting. No, I mean, Are, that, are that, you going to get the team that puts that, up 500 yards of offense and goes insane? Or are you going to get the team where the, the guy runs into the, his own kick returner and fumbles the football? Exactly. Like yeah. They do really little stupid things. Yeah, Jalen, the Jalen's game. pick six. Jalen didn't look good. No, he didn't. Uh, Niners at the Commanders. I think this is one of the better bounce back spots in the history, right? I mean, when's the last time the Niners have lost? Well, I guess earlier this year they lost three straight, but especially not to not to a bad team. Yeah. Right? You just don't. They're not going to lose to a bad Commanders team. Uh, the Niners on the road, I think, slam the Commanders. What is it like? Ten and a half, something like that. Thirteen and a half. Thirteen and a half. Wow. Okay. I stayed away just because I, that's a lot. That's a lot of points, but that's an interesting line to say. I was going to say that is kind of crazy. Uh, Rams at the Giants. Rams are a much better football team, and who are the Giants starting at quarterback? Is it going to be Tyrod? It probably should be Tyrod. I mean, we knew Tommy DeVito wasn't a franchise quarterback. Like people, yeah. Tommy Cutlets, the passing Paisano. He's a bench warmer. <laughs> he's a third string quarterback at best. Yeah. Tyrod Taylor's a better NFL quarterback, but it doesn't matter. I think the Rams win. Uh, yeah, Rams. <laughs> The whole, That's the one of the scariest teams in football. Is, is crazy. Yeah, the, the Rams. The Rams are a team that I would not want to see in the they playoffs. They are getting hot. And, and you know how good McVay is in the playoffs. And Stafford, he's unbelievable. He's fantastic. He really is. I saw I somebody think, be like, oh, sidearm, like a little bit Mahomes style. It's like, dude, he's been doing that nope. since Mahomes is in middle school. Yeah, Mahomes picked that up for Matt yeah, Stafford. Right. Matt Stafford's been sidearming, off-platform, weird arm angle throws since, you know, again, and, Mahomes is in middle school. And the no-look thing, too. He can do it just Especially as well. Especially in this year. Well, that was sick. That was awesome. All right, Dolphins at the Ravens. I think the Ravens, they're, so they're both coming off physical games. Right? So normally, game the normally, yeah, this is the game of the week. Normally, I'd be like, ooh, but two physical games. Like, oh, whoever came off of, you know, a tough emotional game may draw back a little bit. But they're both coming off really big emotional wins. I'll take the better team at home. Uh, the Ravens, the a more Ravens. physical team, right? We see what uh, Miami can do against physical teams. They can tend to crumble a little bit. Although they didn't versus Dallas. Want to make that known. Want to give them their credit. Two weeks in a row of that, I just don't see it. I just think Lamar is playing his ass off. And this team, uh, w- watching them on their defense is incredible. On Christmas night, that was insane what they were able to do to the 49ers. And I, I am more impressed by Lamar's quarterback play every time I watch him. I mean, he is becoming a real legitimate thrower of the football. Yeah, he's always been underrated, and now he's becoming rated properly yeah uh raiders at the colts i'll take the colts to win i mean the raiders aiden o'connell is such a horrific nfl quarterback the offense is just awful which is doesn't make any sense to me doesn't make any sense if, to me. if they had a competent quarterback i think they would be a really scary team i think, I think they Devon, would be competing with the chiefs right now is for jimmy g West. healthy i don't th- i don't believe so i think he is i saw him in shoulder pads the other day why, why is he not on the field I know he threw a bunch of interceptions earlier in the year. So what? At least he could complete a pass in the final three quarters. I, I don't think he's healthy, though. I think he is. It doesn't matter. It's a Colts win. Yeah, I have the Colts. Uh, Patriots at the Bills. Now, this is an interesting line because the Bills are favored by 12. That's a lot of points for a Bill Belichick That's defense, but I will take the Bills to win. Yeah, Bills over the Patriots. I, I don't like anything they have cooking in New England right now. No. And I think uh, Josh Allen's going to have his way. These are two awful games, so we'll go quickly here. Falcons at the Bears. Bears are... <laughs> I, I, I guess a slightly better football this team. Is, I just trust the outdoor team outside over the indoor team outside. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'll take the cold-weather Chicago Bears over the indoor Desmond Ritter, Taylor Heineke Falcons. And we're not betting Atlanta, so we, we no, stick to never bet Atlanta. too. Uh, Panthers at the Jags. Again, awful game. Thank God the Panthers might be the worst team in football. They are the worst team in football because the Jags over the last four weeks have been the worst team in football. So, um, But I'll, I'll, I will lean Jags barely. Yeah, Jaguars. I, I hate Bryce Young and the Panthers, so Fair that's enough. about it. I mean, like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think you're a minority there. Those two games at the end there are just are kind of horrific. We still have our split, right? Yeah, we got three. We have four more games. Oh, all right, sweet. Yeah, Steelers at the Seahawks. I'll take the Seahawks. Okay. Cross country flight for the Steelers. That ain't gonna go well. I, w- I was really hoping to take Pittsburgh and to uh, and to somehow ride the Steelers train on that one and you know predict another Mason Rudolph victory but I I, I don't see it going that's gonna to be Seattle. A, that's going to be a not, hornet's nest in not Seattle, Seattle. That's, there's just no chance that, no. that, that place is going to be insane because uh, they're fighting for their life That that's going to be a really really tough environment again cross country probably cold wet and windy. a really good defense yeah uh, Bengals at the Chiefs. I'll take the Chiefs, but I, again, interesting line. We'll get to that later. But the Bengals are just heavily disrespected in this game, under undervalued because of you know they just got thumped by Mason Rudolph. But I think they're a much better football team than Vegas is leading on. 
I'll take the Chiefs narrowly because they're at home. Yeah, I'm taking the Chiefs. I, I'm not sure what this game will end up looking like. 21-18 Chiefs, something like that. Uh, oh. Broncos uh, hosting the Chargers. I'll take the Broncos. Broncos. I, I just don't trust Easton Stick at quarterback. Nope. <laughs> In the lack of a coach. Yeah, yeah, so. no coach, Easton Stick, not going to go well. No. And then finally, the last game, and our only split, we have the Packers traveling to Minnesota. You're going to take the Vikings. I will actually take the Packers to bounce back here. Jordan Love, going to play well. I know they just <laughs> narrowly beat uh, the Panthers, who are not a good football team. But I think Jordan Love, he looked good. They have a little bit of rhythm with the young players. I'll take the Packers to win close in the division game. I talked about... Um... The, the Titans looking like the most inconsistent team in football. I think both of these teams also have an argument for it. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I don't feel great about taking the Vikings here. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't feel good about taking the Packers. I mean, th- this game is, I would say, a coin flip. Yeah, I mean, Vegas is basically telling that. I mean, uh, Minnesota's favored by two. It's basically okay. a pick em. Almost just, a pick em. I, I'll take Minnesota. I just don't trust Jordan Love and the Packers. I think the game will probably close at, at like you know Minnesota fair by a point. I think it's, I think you're going to see some money coming in on Green Bay. I, like I think it's going to I think it's going to be bet down to a pick 'em. So yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a coin flip type of game. All right. That's our only split there. I'll take the Packers. You're taking the Vikings. Um, tight race here down the stretch for our predictions. Next, we got bets on a budget. Love a lot of the lines this week. We got uh, what three dogs? I'm sorry. Two dogs, three favorites. Favorites have been hitting higher than any rate like ever, and I think it's just because who's the better quarterback, right? They're usually favored, yep. and the better quarterback's been winning more games. And so favorites have been hitting unlike anything else, not just for us, nationwide, right? Like, that's been a trend. Yes, all season long. All right, so let's hop right into it. We got Week 17, Bets on a Budget, presented by SoBet. Go check that out. Use code the issue when you sign up for SoBet. The link can be found right in the description of the video or the episode, no matter how you're watching, where you're watching. It's there. Go sign up. Great expert advice. A lot of really good picks. A lot of people making money over there. It's not a cost it's an investment go get on it so bet code the issue couldn't agree more let's go with detroit plus six at dallas so did you know that i know it's on technically on a saturday night but it's a monday night football broadcast eight straight underdogs have actually won outright on monday night football broadcast that's eight straight weeks um including this past week of course with baltimore being uh, a dog at san francisco I'm not sure. I think I would probably lean, and I did take Dallas to win, but six points is a lot of points. Jared Goff, once again, indoors against the spread, is the most profitable quarterback in football since he has joined the league. Uh, and the Lions on the road under Dan Campbell are covering 63% of the time. Absolutely love the play at plus six. I'll take Dallas to win on a last-second field goal. Their kicker is fantastic. Yeah. Last second, long field goal. I'll take Dallas 33-30. Yeah, I, I do see it being – really really close i think i think detroit comes out and runs the football there's a chance really they win outright it. it would not surprise me even a little bit if detroit wins outright i mean it's just the way if, if they can establish a run game you know what Let's you know say, what jared goff can do with play action you're gonna know within the first quarter if detroit stands a chance you're gonna know two series in well, does detroit it, have a chance it's gonna be can they run the football that's, that's gonna saying. be the and key thing and you'll see it yeah are they good on the line of scrimmage you'll know on. early yeah Tampa Bay minus three versus New Orleans. There is not a worse coached football team in the league since Dennis <laughs> Allen has been Allen has been coaching. I mean, they are awful. Yeah, they're, they're only covering forty three percent of the time as a dog under Dennis Allen with that roster too. And it's even worse on the road. It's down in the thirties. I mean, it is bad. And Tampa Bay is on a little bit of a heater. Baker Mayfield's been good, not MVP good, but over the last four weeks, if you extrapolate that out, he has been an MVP level quarterback in terms of numbers. These past four weeks, he's been really good pass rating in the low hundreds. Uh, Baker Mayfield on the Bucks. I think they win by a touchdown. All right, I like that one a lot, too. I, 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 27-20. 27-20? Yeah. All right, I really don't like uh, the Saints in the slightest. I mean, with the roster that you have, you should be able to at least be competitive. In that division, and they, they have easily the best quarterback. Well, going into the year, I would say Derek Carr was better than Baker, but Baker's mm-hmm. overtaken. Has now way but they have the, yeah. the second best quarterback and the best roster in that division. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad. <laughs> Indianapolis minus three versus Vegas. Did you know Aiden O'Connell did not complete a pass after the first quarter in that game? I mean, they. Well, I said it going into the game. They're closer to the team that scored zero against Minnesota than they are the team that scored 70 uh, against... Uh, Denver. Thank you. No, against L.A. No. Yes, the Raiders scored... Oh, oh yeah, the Raiders. They scored 64. I thought you were... T- 
never mind. Get We're not here. even on Miami. Are no, you I good? Know. Yeah. I'm this good. guy. <laughs> this guy. But anyway. You said uh, 70 in my head. The Raiders, the Raiders are terrible. They're, they're not a good football team. And the Colts bounce back at home. It's a cross-country flight for the Raiders. Um, it was, you know, a bit of a letdown after a big division win in Arrowhead. I think the Colts roll. I'll go 23-10 Colts. Okay. Just kind of run away with it a little bit. Yeah, 23-10. Yeah. It's going to feel closer. They're going to score a late touchdown really put it away. Okay. Fair, yeah. fair enough. Now, here is where you bring in Miami. Baltimore minus four versus Miami. <laughs> For all of Mike McDaniel's strengths, which I think he's a lot of it, very smart guy. Seems like he's a good motivator. He's actually a sub-500 coach out of his own division. 45% of games against the spread. Against the spread. Outside of his own division. Huh. I know, right? I, it kind of surprised me. So, but anyway, and we know how good of a, a coach Harbaugh is. And four is a, is an interesting line, right? So three and a half, the hook goes to the underdog, right? Right. So at three and a half, you're usually going to bet the underdog, especially in a close, like, you know, back and forth type of game. Yeah. At four, though, Vegas is telling you there's a decided advantage for one side. It's the lowest number that you can get with a decided advantage towards the favorite. Does that make sense? Right. So I'll go ahead and go with Baltimore minus four. Okay. It's a classic number for a lot of betters to get favorites. What's your uh, score prediction on that one? Oh, let's go Baltimore. Oh, this is tough. I know. I think it's going to be a little bit lower scoring than a lot of people want to say. I'm going to really? go 23-17. 23-17. Baltimore. That defense is legit. Yeah. All right. I, I like it. I, I think Baltimore will roll. What do you think it's going to be? Uh, I think a little bit higher scoring than that. I think at the end of the day, you have two really good offenses. So I'm going to go 32-26. Okay, interesting numbers. <laughs> Cincinnati plus seven at Kansas City. Believe it or not, the Chiefs have not been a good cover team, especially as favorites. Andy Reid's only covering uh, like 49% of the time as a favorite. And actually at home, it's a little bit lower. I'm sorry, as a favorite, he's 52. At home, though, is 49%. Like they, he's just. It's almost like they play with their food too much. Even yeah. in the even in the height of their dynasty, like the last couple of years, they still don't cover as much as you'd think, especially late in the year. Yeah, it seems like they're almost resting for the playoffs. Now this year they have to fight for every win they can get. Now that's true. Um, but I'm going to take Cincinnati plus the points. That I mean they're undervalued a ton because they got stomped by Pittsburgh, but they're a much better team than being a seven point dog against Kansas City. That just doesn't make a lot of sense. And. They match up. Like, the, the matchup between these two teams is oh, always so tight. It's yep, so close. Absolutely. Uh, I, I know that you're missing Joe Burrow. but at the, the, Jake Browning's good enough. And He's the good roster, enough. The roster around him is built to win. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Just don't make mistakes. You'll be fine. Yeah, I agree. Let's run through them again. Detroit plus six at Dallas. Tampa minus three versus New Orleans. Indianapolis minus three versus Vegas. Baltimore minus four versus Miami. And the dog, Cincinnati Bengals, plus seven on the road at Kansas City. Got to love it. Guys, those are the bets. Go check them out on SoBet and uh, place them on whatever you know betting app you use, whatever is your favorite. Go make some money this week. Uh, we will be back in the third segment with the top 10 NFL teams and, of course, the game of the week, the Ravens and the Dolphins. We will dive more in depth and talk about it all. Don't go anywhere. Let's go segment three of the issue episode 218 on thursday jesus december 28th 218 that just seems wild to me yeah i know how about it uh we got a oh god no not good no we have a solid segment coming up just uh top 10 nfl teams our power rankings that we do every four weeks um and then we will have our game of the week to close things out the ravens and the dolphins so i was just gonna say it's, it's gonna end up being like the joe rogan where we're, we're like yeah we're on episode 2747 you're like yeah. all right but relax like <laughs> yeah yeah. Uh, yeah, we've made a lot of these things. Uh, guys, go check out theissuesports.com to stay in the loop with everything that we put out. Uh, you can find all the links to our social medias, um, all the different platforms to find the show over there. So theissuesports.com. Also, while you're over there, sign up for the newsletter. It's right there on the homepage. Super easy to do and very informative. Comes out every Wednesday. Make sure you're getting on top of that. But we have a pretty good segment. Uh, we get excited for these power rankings. These ones are going to be more meaningful than I would say the last few have been just because we are so close to the end of the season now that this is pretty much we're looking at the playoff picture and starting to rank some of these playoff teams. So, um, you know, without further ado, let's hop right into it. The power rankings for week 17 of the NFL. Yep, like you said, post-week 16, heading into week 17. If you're new here, we always start at 10 and go to 1. So let's go ahead and start at 10. I think the Los Angeles Rams. 
Matt Stafford may be the best quarterback in football over the last four to five weeks. He is playing unbelievable. He's up there with like a Lamar. Baker's been playing well, but I think Matt Stafford has the argument he's been playing better than both of them. Uh, and then working with not a lot. Like I know, I know Puka Nakua is good. I know Cooper Cup's good. Cup hasn't been quite the same this year. Puka Nakua is a rookie, right? Kyron Williams is a rookie who I think it was undrafted or late round pick, something like that. And he's like, what? third in the league in rushing, maybe leading the league in rushing. I don't know. He's got, he's got over 1,000 yards. He's up there. Yeah. Um, and so to do it with, with those guys is really, really impressive. And in a coach quarterback league, is anybody scarier right now than McVay Stafford? There's an argument, no. Maybe Lamar Harbaugh? Maybe. Maybe. maybe but, I mean, this is one of the most elite I, I, Duos combos in the league. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would uh, agree. Uh, the Rams are – we said it, you don't want to face them in the playoffs. Like, that's a team that you just don't want to have to go up against because you know that they're so clever and that in a one-game playoff scenario, they can beat anybody. Yeah, um, that's so fair. The Rams at 10, and I think they climb up this list as we get closer to the end of the season. That's fair. At 9, I would go slight edge to the Browns because I think they have a better defense. They have a better pass rush, and I trust them uh, in the secondary a little bit more than I do the Rams or can can be got in the secondary a little bit. And outside of Aaron Donald, their front seven is pretty weak as well. Uh, so the Browns have the better defense. Joe Flacco is a veteran quarterback. He's not as good as Stafford, but he's not going to make him a, you know, a ton of mistakes. Uh, and he can make some big throws down the stretch. Joe's always had a big arm, can push the ball downfield. Right. Uh, I saw the one tweet where it's like, he played against Troy Paul Mo. These safeties are, are nothing nowadays, right? And yes. it's, it's a good point. Joe has seen it all. Uh, and so I'll take the Browns slight edge at nine. Yeah, like the Browns. I, I think this is a quarter or a, a system where it doesn't really matter that you, what quarterback you have, just as long as they can play their part within the system. Like they don't have to do anything crazy, well, yeah, high flying, a, extraordinary. Right, right. Good run game, good receivers, good offensive line. Nobody's spectacular, but they all do their part. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so for that reason, Browns at nine makes sense. Number eight, and probably the lowest ranking I've ever, we've ever had them at, is the Kansas City Chiefs. Their offense is quite literally the one of the worst offenses in football. Which, if you Which, would have told us that now, coming into the season, yeah. we would have laughed in your face. Well, statistically, they're like, I don't know, 12th or something like that. But I just don't buy that. I mean, uh, when you have to have it, they don't have it anymore. No. It, you could always sputter. They could always sputter. But in the fourth quarter, when you had to have it, Mahomes had it. They don't even have that anymore. To give them two touchdowns in seven seconds is just sad. Yep. It's abysmal. It's embarrassing. Uh, Travis Kelsey is no longer a top five tight end. Mahomes right now is not a top ten quarterback over the last couple weeks, I, and I wholeheartedly mean that. They don't have a receiver that I think would top the or crack the top fifty, uh, and their defense is okay. But to not. For Aiden O'Connor not to throw a pass in the second half and for them to just ball control and run the football like that against the Chiefs is just eye-opening and sad. They're just, it's not a very good football team right now. But they're still, they still deserve to be on this list. One, because, yes, at any given time they can still break out because they still have Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey. They still have the pieces to break out. They just haven't yet. Yeah, I, I don't know if they will this year. Uh, this is They might not. Because... I don't think we've ever had the Chiefs outside of the top five, maybe even yep. top three. Uh, they've been a staple up there, but it's just you, you have to start. We have to start treating it, this team like a mortal, like it is. They have to start um, treating this team like they are mortal, yeah, which they are, uh, which they have proved to be this year. So I, I don't know. Could I see them moving up? Maybe, but I see them more on the downslope than anything else right now. I think they're uh, lucky to be on the list this week, and they could fall off by the time we get to the playoffs. I would agree. Number seven, the Cowboys. I mean, we I, I've been not a Dak supporter. I've been more of a Dak cynic. I've been more of a Cowboy cynic. And then, I, you know, I started being like, well, Mike McCarthy's pretty good. And, uh, well, maybe Dak is the MVP. Well, they surprised for a couple weeks there. And then, of course, two weeks in a row, they lay absolute eggs. I mean, look, Miami's good. It's a good Miami team. But to, to be out physical by a finesse team is eye-opening for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and for them to just control the game on the ground like that is just, that's wild. Did you see that picture of Tony Pollard, how he didn't score on that touchdown? Yeah. He's wide open. It's a walk-in touchdown. Yeah. Walk-in touchdown. He's a running back three on a good football team. So the Cowboys at seven, just like the Chiefs, I think they're more on a down slope. Now, granted, I think they'll be fine. They'll make the playoffs. They'll probably win a playoff game. But they don't feel like Super Bowl contenders like they were just three weeks ago. Yeah, uh, this team had a completely different aura around them. Um the last time we did these rankings. I mean, this team was top of the board, 
didn't want to face the Cowboys. We saw them come out for a two, three, four week stretch there where they were just putting everybody away. Which, Dak was the front runner for the MVP. Yeah, yeah. Nothing was going wrong in Dallas. And then now we've seen them plummet back to earth these last two weeks uh, and plummet down the, the power range. They, they're more Miami than Miami is. Against good teams, the Cowboys shrink. Yeah, they do. Point blank. And especially against good AFC teams, they yeah, shrink. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the Lions at six. They'd be a little bit higher if I fully trust their defense. Their secondary is weak, and they don't get a consistent pass rush outside of Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, but again, Jared Goff, good offense, good run they're, game. They're fine. And, and the defense is still good enough most of the time. They're just not, you know, I don't view them as a top five team until that defense can consistently make stops. Yeah. I mean, that game shouldn't even have been close uh, this past week. So, But either way, the Lions uh, at six, firmly in the playoff race. Would not surprise me if they end up in the NFC Championship game. Mm-hmm. With that run game, that quarterback, and that coaching staff, they are, uh, they're are they truly a threat. I agree. I love it. At number five, the Eagles. Something needs to be said for being able to win games that you wi- that you play ugly, right? To, to give up a pick six, to fumble a kickoff, uh, to have penalties, to just be to just not play a that was a B minus game and they won by eight. Yeah, you know, B minus is that's a B minus and that's being generous. Yeah, I was gonna say that's and a they very put up they, and they put up thirty three and won by eight. Yeah. Like that's you know so something needs to be said for the ability to win ugly because especially in the playoffs nothing's clean. I mean they and so if it's a if this game gets muddied up against anybody in the, in the NFC against except for maybe the Niners who are you take I'm gonna take the, the Eagles, Eagles in a muddy game yes. right. And uh, not, I'm not talking actually muddy. I'm talking, you know. Where right. they play a C game like they did this week. Right. That, like just, that was a, just a back and C forth game. game. They almost lost to Tommy DeVito. Like, let's not. And Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. So let's not forget about that. Yeah, um, no, yeah. I they, think five is low. They've had some. Uh, There's an argument for the Lions to be above them. Eh, yeah. I, I just. If it's in Detroit, I'm taking Detroit. I trust the Eagles more, though, which yeah, is Yeah, but if, it, if it's in Detroit, I would take Detroit. The problem is it won't be. That's the thing. Yeah, so yeah. Eagles 5. Uh, let's go with Buffalo 4. I picked them to win the Super Bowl last week, and I still think they're a Super Bowl winner. I, I think that I think it's... Even against after how they looked uh, against the Chargers. Yeah, yep. Even, even with Baltimore looking like that against San Francisco, I think in a one-game scenario, I would take Buffalo over pretty much anybody in football right now. Wow. They're, at, they're at 4 because of the consistency factor. Right, they looked really good for two, three weeks, and then they looked okay so, against the Chargers. I'm going to say it. It's weird to say that this is their year. Um, but it is. But no, you look no, no, really, it is. It is. Go Kansas for it. Yeah. City's down. Yep. Like, you have a lot of the big the, the big brands in football and in your own conference that are kind of sinking a little bit. Joe Burrow's out. Yeah, Kansas so, City's so, down. So Cincinnati isn't what it normally is. Trevor Kansas Lawrence City's is out. playing like crap. Trevor Lawrence is down. So, like, the path to the Super Bowl and the path to, through the AFC is a little bit easier, and especially with a team that has holes where you're so Josh Allen reliant, if there's going to be a year, it's this year. So they need to win out, get to those playoffs, and just roll. I would agree. Uh, number three to Miami, slight edge just because I feel like I'm getting the better coach coaching staff I'm getting the better weapons so yeah. in, in 2023 I think that's important offensive staff uh the better offensive more consistent offensive team and actually what Miami showed me is they can win physical and they can win muddy right yes. they can kick a bunch of field goals they can uh, not time of possession because they lost time of possession but when they had to have it they were able to control the game control sure. the clock uh, and so that's not normally what we see from Miami we normally see more high flying things but for them to win a 22 20 slugfest is uh it's indicative of growth for Miami so I think that's why they're three and what I've seen from Mike McDaniel and everything coming out of the Dolphins locker room I don't know if yeah. you've seen I like any, the hard the videos yeah absolutely uh, he he ripped into him you, you see a side of Mike McDaniel that you don't normally see he he comes off as the very nerdy scrawny guy Guy, really smart, comes up with good schemes, but you see him be a leader and a, and a, and a coach that just really takes things. I, I guess just solves all the problems in the locker room. He's right. that guy. Yeah, uh, no, I would agree. I like the way he coaches. Very I like what he has Tua doing. Yeah, uh, and, and the team is playing really well. I think the Dolphins at three, they're very scary, and they're going to give the Bills a run for their money for the AFC. If we're predicting that, uh, yeah, I think that's a fair point. Number two, your San Francisco. Don't sell all your San Francisco stock because they lost to the best defense since like 2000. Yeah. Like this is one of the best defenses we've seen in the last 25 years. Don't sell your sock because Brock had a bad game, right? They'll be fine. Now, do is it is it telling of a, of a larger issue with Brock Purdy? Maybe, maybe. But for this year, they should still be the favorite to come out of the NFC. There's an argument they should still be, be the favorite to win the Super Bowl. What are the odds they get drubbed again if they meet Baltimore in the Super Bowl? Let me help you out. Zero percent chance. They might lose, but they're not going to get 
pounded by what 14 yeah. if they meet again that just that would not happen san francisco is going to be fine they're going to go win the next two games uh probably get the one seed have a bye and they're going to be fine they'll be in the nfc championship i was going to say it's going to be way easier to talk about this once we see how all the seeding shakes out and we can they'll start looking matchup by matchup yeah um but I think this is one of the teams that matches up against anybody in the NFC, anybody yeah. in the league for that or for that matter. Um, the 49ers will find their way. They have enough talent a, to do it's it. A, it's a tough game. So what? It's the 49ers. Rinse and repeat. And again, I would punish them if they lost to a team farther down the list, but they lost to, and that brings us to our number one team, the Baltimore Ravens. Again, yeah. they probably have the MVP on their team. There's an argument they have the coach of the year as their coach. I mean, that's one we haven't talked about. Mm-hmm. The amount of injuries they've had, and they're 12-3. and three, Insane. Resounding win at San Francisco. Insane. Maybe a coach of the year candidate. Uh, again, MVP. Kyle Hamilton is making a case for the, like, the first safety to ever win defensive player of the year. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't know if that's true. I just totally made that up. But maybe. He, he looks damn good. <laughs> he looks fantastic. Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen are the best linebacking duo in football. One of the best front fours in football. Like They have... Like, find me the hole in the roster. I'd love yeah. for them to be a little deeper at running back but because they've had injuries. But they always have injuries. It's running back. This is like their, healthy, back. This is like their healthiest year in forever, too, yeah. by the way. Right. So, I like the receivers. I like the offensive line. I like Lamar, obviously. I like the entire defense. Maybe some the, their second corner could be a little weak. Okay. Same with everybody in football. Yeah. Everybody would love two lockdown corners. They don't exist. Like, it, those <laughs> yeah. don't grow on trees, exactly. right? So. I mean, Baltimore's fantastic. Uh, yeah, they're really good. I talked about it being Buffalo's year. This is also, the, you could say the same thing for Baltimore, right? Yeah. They, they, they have been injured, and they've been disappointed by injuries and just the plaguing the team Especially for the last two Lamar. three years. Yeah, right? that's been the problem. So if, if they can finally stay healthy into the playoffs, this is a team that we have been saying for the last three seasons, you're not going to want to see them in the playoffs if they're healthy. And now they will be. And they're going to be healthy. Yeah. All right, let's run back through. we got the Rams at 10, Browns at 9, uh, Chiefs at 8, Cowboys at 7, Lions and Eagles at 6 and 5, respectively. Buffalo at 4, Miami at 3, San Francisco as the runner-up to uh, Baltimore in the one slot. That's going to be good. Uh, those are the power rankings. That's, that's how we see the NFL landscape right now as we head into Week 17. So it should be very good. Um, to, to see how this all plays out, see if we're right going into the playoffs here. Yeah. Right, let's go ahead and get to our game of the week. It's, of course, Miami traveling to Baltimore, both coming off pretty physical, emotional uh, wins. Miami, of course, at home against Dallas. Baltimore on the road in that Monday night game against San Francisco. So normally, again, if it was Miami, you know, came off of a pretty average win, right, dominated, and uh, Baltimore came off of a really, really emotional game, I'd say they drop back a little bit. Obviously, now both teams coming off that physical, emotional win. Are they going to drop back? Who knows? Maybe, but they're both going to be at that same level, you yeah. know? Um, so if, even if both have an emotional letdown, they're, they're still at that same same starting point. If I had to lean a direction, I'd go Baltimore. I think they're the more physical team. I picked Baltimore in prediction. I think they're the more physical team. Uh, in terms of keys to win, we'll start with Miami because they are the underdog. They are the visiting team. Miami offense, you have to burn them, right? You got you have to use your speed. You're not going to out physical them, right? You're not going to run the football like you did, uh, you know, against. Or I guess not run the football with as much consistency. They weren't ripping off huge chunks against Dallas, but you're going to get nothing and you're going to go nowhere if you try to run the football too much against Baltimore. Let's keep them honest, yes. But you have to be able to hit Tyreek, Jalen Waddle, because again, like I mentioned, if there is a hole on Baltimore, it's that second and third corners, right? So line on, lining Tyreek up in the slot, yeah. getting Jalen Waddle, uh, you know, against the safety, stuff like that. And I think Mike McDaniel can do that because his schemes are so good. So that's going to be your key to win there. Uh, for the Miami defense, you have to control the second play, right? They talked about on the uh, on the broadcast. Lamar Jackson is a two play player, right? The play that's called. And then the play that happens when the play breaks down, right? Yes. You have to control that second play, right? Scramble drills, uh, trying to keep them hemmed in as much as possible. Maybe a spy, stuff like that. To try to control the second reaction plays. Mm-hmm. You can live with the first reaction plays. That's what you're more trained to do as a football player. You can live with that. You have to try to to limit the second chance plays because that's when the big splash plays occur. Right. We've talked about it too making teams play left-handed the bill belichick method where yep. you take away the one thing that they do really really well and make them beat you another way the best thing that baltimore does offensively is let lamar 
cook. Let Lamar do whatever he can with the football, run around, extend the play, wait for everything to break down on the defense, and then hit you over the top for a 75-yard dump. Yep. Yep. Uh, so you can't let the Ravens do that. The the Miami defense, you have to you have to come to the game knowing that you are about to be gassed. Like you better be your cardio has to be on point, on point which is tough in week to be 17 covering for <laughs> 7 to 8 seconds every freaking uh time that Lamar drops back. Yeah, it's fair. Uh Baltimore offense, you got to be physical. We know of course Miami um you know, coming off a physical game, there's going to be fatigue that sets in. And it's actually in Baltimore, right? So that goes uh, in your favor as well, a little bit of travel, not cross country or anything, but it's still a factor nonetheless. Uh, so be physical, run the football. You have three, four, five running backs deep. None of them are special, but all of them can take carries. And of course you have Lamar. So get downhill, uh, you know, get the full back in there, start bruising some bodies uh, early. It'll pay off third, fourth uh, quarter. Yeah. Just make it so you don't be predictable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, keep running the football, Just but then also Lamar, right? Play action is going to be your best friend in this game. Getting those linebackers to come up and then hitting them over the top, especially because yep. they're going to be so worried about Lamar off play action being able to orchestrate something himself. Well, so, he is very good off play action, right? So. But if they're going to have to commit somebody to be a spy on Lamar, that's going to open up stuff downfield anyway. Hundred percent, yeah. Uh, for the Baltimore defense, you have to take away that first window throw. We talk about this all the time. We're talking about Miami. It's quick rhythm timing plays. Uh, Greg Cosell says it all the time, if you take away that first reaction play, to a off schedule isn't very good, and especially with that offensive line, which is okay, not special, against one of the best pressure teams in football in Baltimore, that's going to be really tough if they can't get the ball out quick. So if you take away the first read, pressure starts to get home, Tua gets uncomfortable, you can get them off their spot pretty easily, taking away that first window. Well, we've said it many times throughout the year, too. Uh, Tua is noticeably worse when he's under pressure. Uh, and for the he, record, most quarterbacks are, by the way. Yeah. Like, that's not, like, too a specific. No, uh, but he has lost almost every game that there's a solid pass rush. Right? Yeah, like you, yeah. You I think lost against the Bills. I'm surprised that they held up against Dallas. Right. Um, and that's just kind of another, what we were talking about earlier, Micah Parsons not playing up to the level that he's used right. to at this point. But, um no, I, I think if you get pressure on Tua, you can kind of have your way. I don't think the Miami offense is going to be as dominant if you can if you can get pressure and if you can get after Tua and hurry him up a little bit. Like you said, out of, outside of the timing throws, Tua doesn't really impress me all that much. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, score prediction. Ooh, what did I say earlier? I feel like I already did one, but I totally forget. So if it's different, you know, shoot me. <laughs> I think I said low scoring, uh, 23-17. Is that what I said? Something Maybe like that was that. a different game. Like I don't know. 17 Because you like, we have uh, Baltimore minus four. Sure, 23-17 sounds 23-17? Yeah. I'm going to go higher scoring, 33-28. All right, fair enough. 33-28, I feel like that's solid. Yeah, I think I think the first time you said thirty-two twenty-six or something like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, because I said weird numbers. Oh, so yeah. very similar, close yeah. enough. Anyway, that's all. Give us the outro. Yeah, uh, that's all we have for you today. You guys, thanks for stopping by, listening. Make sure you're going to theissuesports.com. Check out everything that we have over there. Uh, all the merch, all the different videos, uh, the newsletter. It can all be found there. And then, of course, following us on our social medias. Stay up to date with the show. We have a lot of stuff coming out every single day, and you don't want to miss it. So make sure you go. You follow on Instagram. Follow on TikTok, Twitter. And, um, of course, go sign up for SoBet. Use code THEISSUE when you sign up over there, guys. We appreciate you listening. We'll catch you back here next Thursday, and that was The Issue.